When God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses in Exodus 20, the fourth command that he gave was that his people should remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. God told the people of Israel that they should work for six days and then rest on the seventh day. And to this day, we know that observant Jews worship on Saturday, the seventh day of the week. Are Christians violating the fourth commandment by worshiping primarily on Sunday instead of Saturday? The short answer to that question is no. Are you sure? (laughs) In my book, The Apostolic Life, I have a chapter in which I address that question in detail. But let's discuss it briefly. And first of all, let's look at the big picture. Uh, The Ten Commandments are part of the Law of Moses, which God gave to Israel. So first and foremost, they're a covenant with God's Old Testament people. We're living under the New Covenant, and so we have New Commandments. Uh, That's why we don't follow all the teachings of the Old Testament with regard to things like sacrifices uh, and ceremonial laws, because we recognize that many of the laws of the Old Testament were specific to Israel, and they were considered as types or shadows that point to greater spiritual truth in the New Testament. So when we have the greater spiritual truth, we're no longer obligated to follow the forms or the ceremonies. And again, the animal sacrifices of the Old Testament are a good example. They're fulfilled by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So now that we have his sacrifice, we have faith in him, we no longer need to follow the commands for animal sacrifices. Well, if you are talking about um, animal sacrifices, then I will agree with you because um, animal sacrifices are no longer required today. They were all pointing to Christ Jesus, and uh, Jesus fulfilled that for us on the cross. But when it comes to the Ten Commandments, they are still required. Christians are still required to keep all the Ten Commandments, including the Sabbath. Yes, that is it. James chapter 2, verses 10 and 11 says, For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. For he who said, Do not commit adultery, also said, Do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. Friends, notice something here that James was speaking to Christians. He was speaking to Christians and he never suggested that um, his audience keep nine of the commandments and leave one. We do look at the Ten Commandments as expressing God's moral law. And of course, God's moral nature never changes. And thus, God's moral teachings would be the same for his people of any age, Old Testament or New Testament. But I would say to the extent that there are ceremonial applications, then that is specific to the Old Covenant. When you come to the fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, I think there's a general uh, moral principle there of taking a day of rest. Now, notice the command was not primarily about worship, and it wasn't specifying this is the only day you can worship or this is the day you must worship or this is the day of your weekly meeting. The Old Testament Jews didn't have the synagogue. The synagogue was an intertestamental development. They had the tabernacle or the temple where the priests conducted the worship. So it was really more of a day of rest, not specifically a day of going to church, so to speak, or going to synagogue. Um, So we kind of miss that when we try to transpose the Old Testament culture to our contemporary church context. All right, when we look at the concept of Sabbath, it includes two major things, all right? It includes the physical aspects where we pause from our labor and have rest for our own bodies, all right? And it also includes the spiritual aspect where we reflect on God, where we connect with our maker, all right? So the Sabbath, does not only mean to rest from our physical labor. It also means a time to connect with God, a time to reflect on God's creative and redemptive 
power. So I think the big principle is we should set aside one day of week for physical, mental, spiritual rest. And yes, it's not about we setting aside one day of the week. It's about God setting aside a day of the week, which we as human beings are supposed to rest and worship. And God has already done that. He has set a day aside for physical rest and also for worship to connect with him. All right. After our daily connection with him, he has also set a full day uninterrupted for us to connect with him and rest from our own work. All right. So it's not about we setting a day aside. It's about God setting a day aside. <laughs> Let's continue. The component of worship and prayer is definitely part of that. But when it comes to the application, we suddenly get into ceremonial law. And James says, if you don't keep all the law, you're, if, you, if you don't keep one part of it, you're guilty of breaking the whole yeah, law. Yeah, that's it. And if you really go through the Old Testament Sabbath law, you weren't supposed to do any work. You weren't even supposed to pick up sticks on the Sabbath. Orthodox Jews today, they won't light a fire, so they won't cook. Uh, they, Since electricity is the modern application of that, they won't press a button in an elevator. They won't uh, turn on the ignition in a car. Um, you know, they won't turn on the electricity, the electric switch in their home because in their understanding that would all be a violation. So some of them just are very strict, some of them ignore it, or some have workarounds. So if you go to Israel, they have Sabbath elevators, which on the Sabbath they stop on every floor. So you can still ride the elevator, but you don't have to push the button um, and, and other examples like that. All right, so let me let me talk about this. You know, um, uh, all what he is saying right now, um, there are the laws that the religious leaders added to the Sabbath command. You know, when Jesus Christ came on earth during the time of Jesus, he had to deal with some of these issues. The leaders, the the, the religious leaders at that time had added to God's laws. And the laws that they added to the Sabbath command, they were unnecessary, all right? Like walking a particular distance on the Sabbath, like not to have medical care on the Sabbath. All these things were not necessary. So Jesus had to deal with that. So the specific command about the Sabbath is to pause work and rest. All right, and also not only to rest, but to also reflect on God. Unfortunately, some of the laws that the religious leaders added to the Sabbath command are still in effect in Israel. That is what um, this man is saying. They are not God's laws. They are human laws that were added to God's original command. And uh, with that one... <sighs> They are not necessary, I think. They are not necessary, all right? Let's continue. Uh, so uh, we don't have to follow those things. And Colossians 2 is very specific. It says, don't let anyone judge you in food or drink or Sabbath days or feast days, ho holy days. He was not talking about the weekly Sabbath. ...of things to come, but the body is Christ. So the New Testament is very clear. These specific Sabbath laws are not binding upon us because they're fulfilled in Christ. You say, well, how is that? Well, if you read in uh, Isaiah chapter 28, it talks about with a stammering lip and another tongue will he speak to these people. This is the rest. This is the refreshing, pointing toward a new covenant experience. In Acts 3, 19, speaking of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, it says times of refreshing shall come to the presence of the Lord. Um, Matthew 11, Jesus said, I will give you rest. Hebrews 4, there remains a rest to the people of God. And it's talking about entering the new covenant, ceasing to trust in our works for salvation, but coming to Jesus Christ and receiving his salvation, which includes the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And it actually uses the word sabbatismos, which means Literally, there remains a Sabbath rest to the people of God. It's not talking about a liberal, literal Sabbath. It's talking about rest and refreshing in the Holy Spirit. So I would argue that Christians today have a, have a Sabbath every day. 
because we're supposed to spend every day worshiping God, spending time in prayer, and enjoying the rest that God gives, leaving aside our old sinful works and not depending on the works of the flesh to save us, but depending on the work of the Holy Spirit. And so the fulfillment of the Sabbath law is to receive the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I do not agree. I do not agree. And just as the Old Testament Sabbath uh, was a mar demarcation to identify the people of the nation of Israel, and, and the Bible even says, I've given this to you, the Jews, Israelites. So the Holy Spirit becomes the new covenant demarcation to identify us along with baptism in Jesus' name, as the people of God today. So I, full, I believe that we do fulfill the Sabbath law through the, through the experience of the Holy Spirit, which sanctifies us or separates us and gives us rest and refreshing and gives us daily fellowship with God, daily worship. So we're not just setting aside one week, one day a week, but we're worshiping God every day. Now, having said that, I do believe there's still an enduring principle of taking the day of rest and pacing yourself, taking time off. And there is a principle of worship. And so Hebrews uh, 10 tells us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, but we should meet regularly with the church. So wherever, whenever your local church has designated, it could be Saturday, that will be okay. It could be Sunday, that would be okay too. But you should faithfully attend the meetings of your local church. So I do believe that principle is still valid. And if we neglect that, whether it be the principle of rest from work for our bodies or the principle of weekly worship, uh, if we violate that, yes, there are spiritual consequences. So to that extent, the fourth commandment is enduring. Uh, but now let's go to the subject. Well, why did we ever move to Sunday? And that's because the early church did so. I think they were quite intentional because the Sabbath was so specifically identified with the old covenant of the Jews that when they became aware they were entering the new covenant, they had a new relationship with God. They were not simply Jews, but Jews and Gentiles united in a new people, the people of God. And they had to learn not to trust the law for salvation, but to trust Jesus for salvation. So they very deliberately said, we want a new day to represent the new covenant. And so they began to worship on Sunday. Now that wasn't coincidence. Jesus arose on the first day of the week. And then he appeared to his disciples again when they were assembled on the eighth day, which the Jews would count starting and ending. So that would be one week later. He appeared to them. They were all assembled on Sunday. And then the day of Pentecost, they were all gathered. The Holy Spirit fell on Sunday. So it seems intentional that the early church started meeting on Sunday to commemorate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and to represent the new covenant. All right, so we see that what he just said is not based on the Word of God. You know, as Christians, we should follow what the Word of God says, all right? So it's not like, um, I think I need a day to worship God, so I'm going to pick my own day. No, that is not like that. It is about what day does the Bible tell us to rest and have fellowship with the Lord? All right, so he made some uh, references to um, the early Christians meeting on Sundays. But what about the biblical references that says the early Christians also met on Saturdays? You know, throughout the history of the people of God, you know, Saturday has always been the day of rest and worship. A day of corporate worship, special worship, a worship to celebrate God, to celebrate his redemptive power in Christ, to celebrate his creative power and everything that the Lord has done for us, you know. And uh, so I think it's, 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 it's good to follow the Bible than to follow human beings. So friends, I want to pause here and invite your comments. You can uh, comment on um, the video right now in the comment section. Let us know what you think about what he said. Let us know what you also, you personally think <laughs> about the Sabbath uh, and about Sunday in the comment section. My name is Lawrence and thank you for watching.